The holiday season is once again upon us, and I thought this year it would make sense to create a few videos on how you as an artist might be able to create gifts to give to your family and friends. So we're going to explore that this week on Mixed Media Masters. Hello makers and welcome to the studio. Now if this is your first time here then it's good to have you. Thanks so much for visiting us. By the way we drop a video every single week and would love to have you be one of our regular viewers. So feel free to hit that subscribe button below and we will make that happen. Now as promised we're going to talk about gifts. We're going to talk about holiday gifts, things that you can give to your friends, to your family, to loved ones everywhere. And this week I want to talk about how we can incorporate again our love of art and abstract art but also to create something that's a little bit more practical, let's say. Because art, well, it's wonderful. Usually its job is to be aesthetic. It sits on a wall and we look at it and say, isn't that wonderful? But we want to have something that's also going to have a practical side. And so this week, I want to focus on the creation of clocks. That's right. Time pieces, something you can hang on a wall, which is a perfect way to display your art, but also something that has a practical aspect because you can look at it, of course, and tell what time it is. Now, there's a number of different things we can do with clocks. And, uh, and here's an example of one that I created a couple of years ago using an old 45 uh, piece of vinyl, right? This is a, a record album, for those of you not familiar with the media. Uh, but it's really kind of a fun thing to be able to have. And the nice thing about this is generally you're working with just the, the components that go into creating a clock. So, for example, I have this. This is the, the clock mechanism. And as you can see, it's a, you can buy these. They're very affordable, which is another great reason to make these gifts. And it's just a, a compartment in the back where you can put the battery, you can set the time, and uh, this spindle, which is where all the magic happens. And what it allows us to do is it allows us to take things like these, uh, these watch hands, these clock hands, and put them into place if we want. Of course, we can also modify these clock hands, decorate them, repaint them, put things on them. We can make this really uniquely ours. So I want to spend a few minutes today sharing with you some possibilities. There's no right way to do any of this, as we often say on this channel. It's really up to what you want to be able to create. But we're going to create uh, some clocks. So I'm going to put a few of these together for us. And uh, let's see what we can do to make something really interesting happen here. Now, the foundation for our clock is going to be a board. And uh, if you've been following the Elemental series, and I hope you have, uh, we may have a board that looks like this. This is part of a, this is one of the ones I didn't end up using for our series, but it is basically a painted board. It's been designed to make it look a little antique-y, if you will. And this could be a great foundation if we want to work with it. Now, the other thing we could do is, of course, using a, a basic piece of wood here. This is just a piece of quarter-inch plywood. And I'll, by the way, I'll have the description down below on where you can pick up pieces like this if you need them. This could allow us, of course, as the foundation for what we want to do if we want to put some sort of paper on here and create a collage, which we're going to, we're going to take a stab at. So we'll talk about a few different things we can do. But one of the first things we want to be able to do before we create uh, anything is get it ready for the clockworks. Now, again, with this, uh, with this mechanism here, the uh, spindle has to be able to come through the board. And so what I'm thinking of doing in this particular board is I want to be able to drill a hole so we can make that happen. Now, couple of things to consider here. First of all, where I put the hole might matter to me. Uh, it may not. I may be very abstract and have it off center, do something rather unusual. I'm going to go a little more traditional and try to get to the center of this board. Now, how do I drill into the center of this board? Well, I can probably sort of kind of maybe eyeball this, but there's actually a better and more precise way to do that. And that is to take our handy dandy ruler here. And what I want to do is I want to basically measure from corner to corner. Well, I'm just going to actually draw a straight line between my corners here. There we go. Corner to corner. So off we go. And let's do the same thing on this corner. On this side, corner to corner. And again, you want to get close. It doesn't have to be uh, Swiss precision, although not bad if you can make it happen. Okay. And uh, once you've done that, guess what? That crossover where the lines intersect, that's our center point. And so it's a matter now of grabbing a drill. And I'm going to do a few things. First of all, I have a board that I can put behind my piece of wood so that I can drill into it without damaging anything else. And uh, I'm going to, of course, need a drill. Now, I'm using uh, just a hand uh, electric hand drill. Uh, the important thing, it is a 5 16 bit that we're using. That is the standard size, at least that matches the mechanism here. And I think most of them are fairly standard. So 5 16 inches uh, in the American uh, vernacular and uh, that'll work for you. So I'm going to uh, grab the center point best I can here. There we go. 
And uh, yeah, not so bad, not so bad. Again, those that line will be taken care of. Now, you may want to just take a moment, if you have some sandpaper available, to just give it a little bit of a, a sand. Just give it to those rough, rough pieces. It's not going to make a huge difference because most of this stuff is going to be covered up in the future, but just makes it easier to work with if there's not a lot of extra pieces. Okay, so there is uh, the foundation of what we want to be able to work on. And again, this doesn't have to be a square piece of, of plywood. It could be a total, you know, oval shape, whatever kind of, you know, make it paisley. I, it doesn't really matter. Where you put the hole is entirely up to you. It's uh, probably not a bad idea to dry fit it. Make sure that the hole is the right size. There we go. Looks like it's coming through just fine. And by the way, I am noticing, and I'll just share this with you, that in some of the cases, the kit I bought has different length spindles. So the spindle you use is going to be the one that's going to work best for you to get through whatever whatever you're creating. I'm going to go with the longer spindle here as well. Now, I'm not going to put the spindle in yet. It's just really a dry fit to make sure that it will work in the future, and that's, uh, that's going to be fine. What I really want to focus now is on my piece of wood. Is all right, uh, what do I want to do with this? How can I make this an interesting looking background? So let's think about a couple different things that we might consider here. One, I'm thinking I want to have a, a background color of some sort that I can put on here. And I'm going to pull some paper here out of my uh, of my paper my paper stash, my bin, where I put a lot of my leftover scraps because you never know when they're going to come in handy. Um, I have here a uh, a round blue piece, and uh, and here is some yellow. There's some yellow. And you know what I'm thinking? I might create uh, an interrelationship between these two. And again, there's no right way to do this, but I'm thinking if I can cut along the blue line here, kind of keep this curve going. Or, you know what, I can even change it. It doesn't have to be a curve, it can be more of a, a wavy line. But what I want to do is something I've talked about in previous videos, is I have here some uh, some clips. These are these are now often used in place of common pins for people who are sewing. These are sewing clips. But what I find what really works well for me is if I can clip my pieces of paper together, it makes it so that when I'm cutting them together, they uh, they don't slip. It allows me to kind of adjust it so let me get that out of the way there. And so I can come in here and I can create kind of an intro relationship. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go with a curved line. By the way, the worst thing that can happen is if we have something that doesn't turn out the way we want it to, we can cut it again, right? So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna create a bit of a curved line, something that will allow the blue and the yellow pieces to have a natural border between them. So they'll fit in together nice and tightly when I get it on the board. So let's, uh, let's see what we do here. Let's come in here like this. I'm going to curve, and then I'm going to change the curve, and then I'm going to curve. There we go. So, my yellow piece has the curve. I'm going to take the clips off now, and uh, the blue piece will have the same curves. See how nicely that goes together, right? So, if I were to, uh, again, we have a fairly large blue and yellow piece, not nearly as large of, as the space we need to cover here. So an opportunity to kind of come in here and glue these elements down and create that border. There we go. That's nice and tight there. So what I'm going to do simply is I'm going to need to tack this down. By the way, you can tell this has been used before. This is the good thing about reusing paper is that nothing gets wasted if you uh, if you want to have give it a second life. Uh, this one is definitely getting a second life as a clock. See, it had no idea when it woke up this morning. This is what was going to be happening to it. So it's a beautiful thing. All right, I'm going to get some... Uh, I'm going to get some glue on the back of this paper here, and again, I just needed something that will be able to hold it down. We're going to secure everything in place a little bit later, but let's just make sure we have enough, uh, enough glue. And I can also make sure the glue gets on the board itself, just to, just to hold it in place. Okay, and then it's just a matter of kind of dropping this guy in where we think... Uh, those curves are needed. Uh, I'm gonna do it like that. Do it like that. Okay. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the yellow piece here. Let me just get some more glue on my board. Get those edges. And it eats the glue stick quickly when you're putting it onto wood here. There we go. And then it's just a matter once again of let's uh, let's, find the, let's find the right side. That's gonna make a big difference here in how we do it. There we go. And that's uh, look at how nice that. That coupling is perfect, clean line. And there we go. 
So those two pieces are going to go together really nicely. It's going to be interesting to see how this looks when we get it cut. Now I'm going to, I'm going to take a utility knife, just you know your standard craft knife. It's not uh, anything super special. But when I flip this guy over now, I might give it just a moment to, to dry a little bit. Now I can come in here and I can just uh, cut away following the contour of the board. Free it so we can see what it's going to look like. There we go. And uh, guess what? We have some leftover paper still that's going to go back into the uh, the bin here. I'll take this one off too. I might let the glue on there dry a bit. All right, big reveal. Oh, that's kind of fun, isn't it? Kind of fun. So again, what we end up doing here is entirely up to you, what your needs are. I'm just creating a background. I'm creating something that if I want to build something else onto it, I can do that. I'm using complementary colors here because again, they, they play well together, they pop nicely. And I think we could really have some fun with this. Now there's not to, not to say we can't add an additional color in here of some sort, but one of the things I want to do before we go too much further is I just want to use my utility knife and I want to make sure I've marked out where this hole is. I'm going to poke it through here. and. Uh, just try to see if I can cut it out a little bit. And we're going to be pushing the spindle through here, so it doesn't have to be an exact cut hole. Not only that, it's rather hard because it's kind of rough on the inside. But at least I'll be able to see where this goes. And once again, if I am you know, pushing my spindle through, I don't think I'm, going to push it. I'm going to push it down through since the glue is still setting here. I don't want to, don't want to disrupt anything. But there we go. It's, it will fit. That's the good news. All right, so <laughs> let's not make more problems than we need. But anyway, we have we have our hole there. We'll be able to work with. Let's get this down. Just again, let's make sure it's all. All right. Now, what I might do if I'm making a series of gifts, I might come and make uh, several different backgrounds. I might have a couple of different ideas to work with. Let's uh, let's play around with that for a second, and and why the heck not? I'll get a few more boards prepped, and then we'll see if we can put some backgrounds on here. Okay, I have a few more boards that I've prepared. So we have our, our boards with a hole in them. And uh, here's one I've used that uh, from a previous project and uh, it's already colored up. I don't know, we'll see where it goes, right? Oftentimes, one of the fun things I discovered about creating art is that it's, uh, it's sometimes it's a surprise to you as well where you end up. Now I'm thinking in this case, what I would like to do is something not unlike what we've already done with our first piece. I want to create some sort of a uh, foundation, a background, but I'm thinking something uh, maybe a little bit more monochromatic. I want to go perhaps with some, some blacks and some gray tones. So let me uh, dig through. Actually, I have a piece of black here that we might be able to employ and uh, uh, some gray or some taupe here that may work as well. And uh, here's a, here's a lighter piece. And I like these three colors together. I think they may work really well. So in a similar way, I want to create a, a, an interrelationship between these pieces. Yeah, that'll, that'll work. And I'm going to start with uh, creating a, an intersection between the black and the gray. I'm going to maybe just a kind of a curvy line just uh, between these two. That, that might be kind of fun. So once again, let me get these guys clipped together so I can hold them in place while I'm cutting them. I just don't want them to slide, otherwise we end up in a situation where our, uh, our cutting lines don't match up the way we want them to. So, and actually it might make more sense to cut on this side so I can see where the black is. So, all right, I'm gonna once again grab my rotary cutter and uh, I'm just gonna come in here and I think I'm just gonna create kind of a wavy line of some sort between the uh, these two pieces here. So let me start in like this and wavy, 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 and wavy, wavy, wavy back, and let's take it off the end. There we go. So now, if I unclip this piece, this will be our black piece. I'm going to flip these over, and this will be our gray. And if I come in here, I can create an interrelationship between those two that's going to look like that. Okay? So that'll work. Now I'm going to put the black aside because I still need to do the same thing if I want to incorporate this third color, but I do, is that I'm going to need to figure out how to, how to fit this piece in uh, on the other side. Now again, I want to make sure I'm kind of staying within the confines of the board I'm putting everything onto. So just figuring out how much overlap. There we go. Right about there should work. 
Yeah, maybe a little bit more. All right, not so bad. All right, I'm gonna clip this piece again, and uh, let's do the same. Well, I guess if we need to, we'll clip it. By the way, if you need to make a, a good clipping place, a pair of scissors will create a place for you to get into. There we go. So now I can get a clip on this side as well. Okay. So once again, the uh, the goal here is to create kind of a, a weavy, curvy line between these two pieces. Just something to have them dance together. And I'm gonna so I'm gonna bring it over just a just a wee bit more. Just give it a little bit more coverage over here. There we go. And uh, there we go, that looks pretty good. And the thing I love about this, again, working with scrap is, is a lot of these scraps aren't really good for a whole heck of a lot. I mean, they're good look bursts of color, but uh, some of the paper has been wrinkled, some of it got wet. I mean, there's all things, sorts of things that happen to your paper when you're working on projects. All right, so uh, last thing I want to be able to do here is I want to create, again, I want to create a jaggy line or wavy line between this uh, lighter gray and the darker gray. So come in here, wavy, wavy, wavy. Okay, and again, we'll get that clip off. So now, this is gonna be our center gray, and it will melt up on one side beautifully with this black. And now, we take this other clip off, and I now have, let me pull this in the center so you can see it. I now have three colors that are gonna interact with each other beautifully. A little bit of a wrinkle there, but I think it will make that work. So, once again, what's going to look really good, of course, is when we get this onto the board itself. So I'm going to grab my trusty glue stick, and let's just lay down a kind of a foundation of, of sticky on the board itself this time. Let's just hold our pieces of paper in place until we can get everything secured a little bit more tightly later. Okay, good stuff. And then it's just a matter of let's... Uh, let's mirror our first two pieces together and again we just want to make sure everything fits beautifully and covers up uh, on the board. Alright, let's get in there. Sometimes you can feel the overlap too, that's kind of how we get in here and make sure that everything fits exactly, exactly right. Come on. Right, well, I'm trying to get it. There we go. It's Pretty darn close to perfect. I'm just trying to force it to be a little bit more perfect. That's all. All right, let's get those pieces in there. And then finally, let's get this gray in before our glue sets. And uh, once again, let's just make sure we have a perfect melding relationship on that side. And let's just fuel the board underneath and just get the sealed nail down. And once again, we're gonna we're gonna fix this up because uh, it doesn't. <laughs> I don't know. It looks, it looks like something interesting, but let's. Uh, Get it flipped over, grab our utility knife again, and let's cut away the, uh, the excess here. Okay. There we go, there's one side. There's the fourth. So once again, let's get our scrap paper pieces out of the way here. And the big reveal, oh, yeah, that's kind of what I had in mind. Once again, I'm going to just make sure the hole, the center hole is, is known. I'm just going to make it easy if I need to push a spindle through that to, uh, to have a place to, to work with. There we go. Yeah, that'll work. But there we go. So I'm going to give that an opportunity to dry. But again, I think this is a... It's a possibility, right? We're just creating a foundation. What we end up doing in here is entirely up to us. I just want to create kind of a neutral background that I can work with. Let's, uh, let's create another one. I have a different idea this time, and uh, let's explore what we might be able to do with that. Now, if you're a regular watcher of this channel, you've probably seen me do some work with comic book pages as part of collages. It's kind of fun. Comic book pages just offer lots of different types of colors, bursts of colors, and you can get different textures on the paper. I like working with the glossy ones if I can do that. And I'm thinking that might be really kind of fun for something like this. 
just a background that is really just a, a, a collage of different elements taken from a comic book. Now, I'm not going to overthink this one. And what I think I'm going to do here is I, I have a comic book. And I'm going to come in here and I want to be able to just pull some different chunks and colors and maybe faces. I don't know. We'll see what happens. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to use a paper punch. I have a paper punch here, which is a triangular paper punch. And the thought is, why don't I just go make a whole bunch of triangles and then reassemble them on my board. And then again, as we'll do, we'll cut away the excess, but we'll have something really just is combinations of these colors and images that we might uh, be able to work with here. So let me uh, create a little bit of a pile here. And again, it's just a, I may just have to tear a page out. And I'll provide in, uh, in the description below uh, some resources, some places you can go to if you want to buy bulk comic books for purposes like this. Because if you, if you have a comic book collection, you probably don't want to necessarily dive into it and cut stuff up. But a lot of these uh, that I'm cutting up are things that I purchased quite literally for this purpose. So there we go. So there's a piece. And uh, again, I'm going to do that uh, maybe 20, 30 times. We'll see how many come out of here. And if there's anything in here that's kind of fun from a... From a phrase that might be uh, that might stand out, I may do that as well. I don't know what that says. Not, probably nothing super meaningful. There we go. There's a there's a face in that one. That might come in handy. There's some green colors there. Let me get some red in here as well. Okay. And uh, let me just go to town on this for a few minutes, and then uh, we'll, get, we'll put them together. We'll get some assembly going. There we go. Okay. So once again, it is a foundation. What we put on top of this is entirely up to us. Now, I have a couple of thoughts, and I'm not sure if they're good thoughts or not. But when we get the hands on, we could also decorate the hands. We could do something with the hands to make it a little bit more interesting, uh, make it stand out. Um, and we'll, we'll explore that, right? We have those options, right? So there's a, a couple possibilities there as well. Now, with regard to, uh, you know, this piece here, one of the things that I've done with the Elemental series, which hopefully you've been watching the, uh, the new video that's being dropped every day during the month of November 2023 is it will give you, uh, you know, a different kind of um, uh, collage, something that's been built here. And there's nothing wrong with me coming in here and saying, hey, let's, you know, let's, let's collage this guy out and, uh, and get some pieces in here. And, uh, you know, whatever, whatever's going to work for me, for you, I'll find my scissors. we have the potential of coming in here and just making this into kind of a fun, one-of-a-kind piece of artwork that is also a practical clock. So that's that's an, an objective as well. Let me see what I have to, I'm going to take up. This orange color is really nice and bright. It pops against just about everything. And uh, those of you who have been uh, watching my videos for a while know that I have the tendency to be unsubtle when it comes to color matching. I like things that really you kind of grab as much uh, much attention as possible. And you know, this pink color, once again, I can get this piece out here and create something that will go in here. And again, sometimes I just let the scissors go take a wander and see if I come up with something that might be, might be interesting. I don't hate that. And the, the curve here, you know, once again, Matching curves is a great way when we're working with abstracts to really create something that is a little more planned, you know, and I think that works out nicely there. What I might do here, the interrelationship between this piece and this piece aren't as good, but you know what? Let me just, uh, let me just flatten the side. 
like that, and I can create that and uh, even move these a little bit closer. All right. Looks like a guy running. I don't know. It, it could be whatever we want it to be. Again, I'm going to work with this piece just because it's a little bit easier to illustrate since we can see the hole clearly. But when we are working with our clockworks, again, what we have here in the front is a spindle. You may have different length spindles depending on what's going on. Now, because I'm working with this board, uh, this shorter spindle doesn't work for me. I can't actually get the, the nut that's going to hold this into place on there. Now, in the back, there's a reservoir for the battery. It takes a AA battery and a way to, to set this. There's no right way whether this is upside down or right side up. It doesn't really matter. It comes down more to what you want to do with that. But one of the things we want to think about as we're getting ready to put something like this together is how are we going to put this up on the wall if that's where we want to put it. And most of these clock kits will come with a series of hangers that look not unlike this guy here. And what I want to be able to do is to create something that's going to be able to uh, allow this to hang. Now, by the way, this, uh, in this particular kit I have, there's a kind of an indentation circle which allows this to lock this metal piece in. So that's nice. Now, what I also want to be able to do is uh, I have some rubber washers here which are just going to prevent things from pulling through. And that's pretty much what I need to do. Now it's just a matter of, as we get this poked through the hole, like that. Okay, we can see what the back is going to look like. This is how it's going to hang. And now, I need to make sure that that gets uh, affixed there. And I have in my kit, I have a metal washer, which I'm going to slide down over here. And I have a nut. And I'm going to put the nut in place. And you might want to get a pair of pliers for this because, uh, well, you just want to make sure it, it tightens up. You can finger tighten it to a certain degree, but it's, it's going to be one of those things that's going to be a lot easier if you just put some pliers to it. I'm going to, I'm going to finger tighten mine for now. I'll come back later and really get it in there. Okay. Straighten things up the way you want it. Okay. Not so bad. Okay. Now, by the way, if I want this to be right side up, let's, uh, let's just make sure we adjust accordingly. There we go. Otherwise, we're going to have an upside down clock, which is not what we, what we wanted to be able to do. So now we have the clock mechanism in place. What we can do with that, and by the way, these kits that you can get, and there will be a description in, down below. Uh, these are very affordable, but they come with a series of uh, different types of hands. So you may have a, a different feel. I've got kind of a silver thing going here. I've got some more, uh, you know, kind of old timey uh, hands here. I've got some, uh, looks like they may be glow in the dark. How cool is that? And so whatever we use here is entirely up to us. I'll, I'll use the, the glow-in-the-dark ones just a little bit here. And let's get those out of their plastic sheath here. And uh, I believe that is actually glow-in-the-dark. That's kind of cool. And what you want to be able to do, if you look at the spindle here, and let me uh, turn it sideways so you can see it, there's kind of different levels. There's a spindle that goes all the way down to the bottom, and there's one that goes on top of it. And then there's a hole in here. So for example, with the hour hand, for those of you who need a reintroduction to analog clocks, that's going to be the one that's going to be on the bottom. And this is going to sweep around every 12 hours. And you want to be, uh, you want to be somewhat gentle putting these in. You can, they can fight you a little bit. But well, there we go. So that's going down. And by the way, these are really thin metal. And so you want to be really careful you don't mangle them. It's, uh, it's not hard to do at all. And then on top of it, and the, and the smaller spindle area is going to be where the, uh, the, the second hand goes. This one that counts, this is the, I'm sorry, the minute hand. The hour hand, the minute hand, that's what I meant. This is going to sweep every hour. There we go. And then finally on the top, there's a hole. And in this case, there's a little bit of a, it's a, it's a hollow tube. And that's going to be able to fit into the pin that's right here at the top. That, that kind of looks pretty good. Now, you know, for this to work, of course, we're going to have to be able to get a battery in there and, and set it up. And I happen to have a battery right here, so let's uh, pop this guy in. And there we are. We are off and running, and of course, we'd have to set our time. Now, again, <laughs> this is a fun project in the sense that there's so many different ways that we can go with this. And I'm going to finish these guys up. Now, sometimes you just have to take the time to work on your muse and get to where you want to get to. And I took some time to sit down with these different clocks and think my way through them and work on design elements and also on some of the clock elements that are in here. And I'm really happy with how some of these have turned out. 
you know, for example, I've been able to create uh, kind of an abstract art piece one here, right? And uh, I also took and I covered the hands. I basically just glued paper onto them. So I can control the color of the hands as well and um, have my abstract art type of, of clock. So that's going to that's gonna look pretty nice when I uh, throw it up on a wall. So that's one option. I was also able to, uh, to work with a, a little bit more of a um, kind of a, a traditional look, kind of the black and white. I've got the monochromatic going here with the spots of color to show the different parts of the time. And as I said, I have three, a six, a nine, and a 12 spot because it just seemed to make sense to me. Now, again, I'm going for sort of elegant and whimsy at the same time if I can do that, but I'm, I'm not unhappy. I'm not unhappy with how this one turned out. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take it. Um, I was also able to finish uh, this guy up here. And uh, as you can see, I've got a battery in this one, so it's, it's, it's running as it should. But what's really kind of fun about this as well is that it's very minimalistic and yet very colorful. And again, that separation of the colors between the top and the bottom here, kind of like a Ukrainian flag look now that I think about it. And then we have uh, the different dots coming in here and putting dots on the hands themselves. Also, the yellow and the blue kind of continues the theme. So again, not unhappy with that. I worked on a, uh, a fifth idea, because I came up with five altogether, and this one's just kind of more of a throwback, kind of a mid-century abstract look, where we've got these cut-out squares that are hollow, and I put squares on the hands as well, just, you know, give it a little bit of different color, some shapes that all kind of all work together, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking this is, this is pretty cool as well. And then finally, and I, I'm going to admit, I kind of like this one, it took a, a lot to get through, but I was able to go and with the comic book background, I was able to get my background. I went through different comic books and I was able to find the numbers 12, 3, 6, and 9. So I put those in here. But uh, the second hand here is, uh, it's, if you can see here, it's actually one of the comic book characters. Uh, a, a blaze of flame behind her uh, blasting out through space. And I thought that would be great. So I incorporated that into the second hand of this clock. And of course I put paper on the other hands too to help them stand out from the background. That was really the focus. So, yep, got, uh, got this piece. It's, uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be easy to see or not, but it's certainly something to look at. So I want to be able to share what I've done with y'all, which means that I'm going to be putting all five of these clocks into the gallery at SpectivaStudios.com. By the way, you can find the link in the description below if you want, or just SpectivaStudios.com. Uh, yeah, put that, put that in, and uh, you will find these in a special section uh, I'm just going to be calling miscellaneous for right now. And I will be offering these up for sale for a really good price. And by the way, I'm even going to throw a battery in. How about that? Yeah, what a bargain. Uh, so if you want to do some holiday shopping for someone in your life, then uh, these are going to be available. Now, I will mention one thing, just because of logistics in my life, is that I will only be able to accept orders on these clocks up to December 7th. December 7th, 2023. Uh, after that, I may pull them down forever. Or I may pick them back up sometime, but I'm going to be doing some traveling and uh, life gets busy during the holiday seasons, right? So up to December 7th, I will be perfectly happy to uh, get these packaged and shipped out the door to you. After that, uh, it's not going to happen. So just putting it out there. Anyway, I appreciate everyone's time and attention, and I hope you, uh, I hope you get a chance to go out and make your own things. That's even more fun than buying stuff that somebody else has made. But uh, clocks, great gift ideas, practical, attractive if you, if you build something fun. And uh, they're really a lot of fun to make as well. Anyway, that's all I have for you this week. Thanks so much for your time with me. Really appreciate you stopping by. And I'll talk to you later.